Hello Bible lovers, I'm Tim Nichols and I'm here to bring you your Nichols Word. Today we are featuring the Holman KJV Study Bible. Now don't confuse this with the Thomas Nelson KJV Study Bible because this has different notes. And if you want to know which way the notes are leaning, just know that CSB owns Lifeway, which is owned by the Southern Baptist Convention. So that kind of gives you an idea of which direction the notes take. So let's take a look at the Bible itself. It comes with this nice little slipcase box, really slick. And it comes with a beautiful bonded leather cover. Now what bonded leather is, is little chunks of leather kind of left over, recycled, and glued together to form one piece. So while genuine leather, which is one whole piece, is nicer and probably will last a little longer, this isn't bad at all. And the cover's nice and flexible. It feels legitimate. Um, the gilding looks really good. It's not wavy like some of your cheaper Bibles are. They really do a good job of making it nice and even. Ribbons for a Bible of its price range and quality are very adequate. I'm very satisfied with those. It would be nice to maybe have one more with a Bible so thick, which we'll talk about that in a minute as well. Liner is a synthetic liner, which always gives you, number one, a better lay flat experience, and number two, it makes it a little more durable. This is not edge lined. Of course, this is not a premium Bible, so you want to be careful to not be abusive because that can pull apart, but as long as you take care of it, this thing should last you a lifetime. This cover page here, they all have a tendency to wrinkle like that it's a common problem even in very expensive bibles a lot of people just tear them out because they just get in the way so let me show you a few things let's go to genesis first of all we have our transmission canonization of the old testament book so this kind of tells you how the old testament was formed who the authors were um, this is a really cool little chart gives you the sources and authorship um, talks about oral traditions, early writings, Moses, divine inspiration, and the minor editing, which is obvious in the Old Testament, because sometimes even after the author is dead, they'll say, and to this day, or something like that. So let me show you just a couple other really, really slick things. It has a lot of great illustrations, has a great map. Um, now, what's really cool about these maps is that sometimes you're in the story, and you're like, I wonder where this is geographically. So this Bible provides maps. Um, sometimes it'll provide small ones in the commentary. Um, also, just notice this right here, that the outer column has your cross-references. So that's really nice to kind of have that out of the way. It is a double column. Some people prefer single column, but double column here works great. It's a nine-point font. And if we go back a few pages, that's really cool. Um, I love that image of the art. I love that it's not cartoony, but it's also not a quote-unquote picture. But one of the things I want to show you is an essay. And these are kind of spread out throughout the text. And this essay talks about the uniqueness of the Genesis creation or the Genesis creation story. There's a lot of creation stories out there. So this one kind of shows how the Genesis story gives not only a unique perspective on creation, but a unique perspective on God. Um, it's a three column setup in your commentaries. It looks like maybe about a seven point font here, but this is a nine point font. Nice and readable. Leading space is good. The paper appears to be thin-ish probably between a 2830 GSM, but it is line matched, which really helps incredibly for that ghosting. So the, the, the bleed through is very minimal whenever there's a text backing it. Now, whenever there's a blank space, of course, you can see it ghosting. I wanna just show you a few other quick things about this Bible. Of course, I showed you the map already. Um, check that out. I just thought that was really cool. So you're reading in Genesis and they're talking about the priestly robe and the ephod, and they give you a visual of saying, you know what, this is probably what this looked like. A few other things that I think are super cool. I got some stuff marked out for you just so I can get to it quickly. I think that is a super cool image because that is an image of how the people of Israel gathered in their camps according to their 12 tribes and if you notice it looks just like a cross. So I just thought that was a pretty slick touch. So let's just keep going and look at a few other things. That's a neat little image but that's not what I want to focus on. Each book comes with like a pictorial introduction, which I want to show you a couple other things too. Another little kind of a small map that shows you geographically where you are in the story. And I thought that was really cool. An image of the temple. And again, it's not a picture picture. It's not a cartoon. It's just kind of in between, which I think is a really neat touch. So now let's dive in to some other things. We have, in between the Testaments, the canonization of the New Testament, how that formed, and a chart dealing with that. We also have the words of Christ in red, which I think is really nice, really dark, really sharp looking. I don't have any issues with that. 
One more thing, if we can get to it, as I'm scrolling along here, another map, is when you get to the beginning of some of the books that represent cities like Romans, when you have a major city, it kind of gives you an overview of the city with a little legend. I thought that was really neat. So you get kind of an overview picture of Rome. A couple more things, and then we'll close out. We have the book of Revelation, and I wanted to show you the tables of weights and measures, which isn't very important, but this is awesome. It is the King's English. Whenever you get to a place to where you don't understand a King James word, this breaks it down for you. It comes with a full concordance, has several blank pages for notes, and then last but not least, Holman maps are made on Bible paper. Awesome. One last thing I want to compare before I close out this video is look. These are illustrated study Bibles that are fat boys. This one's thin. You can hold it in your hand. You could even use this as a preaching Bible. Anyhow, this is your Nichols' work. Keep calm. Jesus on.